Hi folks, my name is Renato and I'm here to give Microsoft Flight a go. Um, before I start, I just want to let you know that I like my flight simulator games and I also consider myself as a hardcore gamer. Anyways, when I heard about Microsoft Flight coming out, I thought it would be like a great replacement to Microsoft Flight Simulator X. <coughs> I haven't had a good run with FSX because, you know, it's to me it's such a hardware hog and despite having a good computer at the moment, it still doesn't seem right to me. So anyways, <coughs> excuse me, I thought that Microsoft Flight would be the great replacement. Unfortunately when the news came in, we tend to see that the simulator name has been dropped out and it seems that the so-called simulator, or we should say now game, has become like a Pilot Wings clone type. And, you know, that's not pretty good for us hardcore simmers who've been wanting a new version of Flight Simulator for a long time. Regardless of that, Microsoft Flight release, uh, Microsoft release uh, Flight for free, but of course there's some limitations as you can see here. If you want to play Hawaii, you have to buy Hawaii. Oh, just to let you know, uh, when they released it, only Hawaii was released, and if you want other regions, you'd have to pay for it. I don't think that's a good idea, considering that there are... Well, you know, I guess it's a business strategy. Because, you know, in the previous flight simulators, there were... Once again? There were third-party uh, companies who contributed to, to the flight simulator series, and that's what kept it alive, and that's what made so many fans of the... Simula simulator series because you get these awesome add-ons, you can fly wherever you want, you can customize it to the way you want. Here in flight, not so. There's no third-party support and as such, Microsoft will be the ones who release all the new aircraft in the simulator. What makes it even worse is that you have to purchase the aircraft that, that gets released over time. Uh, in this version, I have only two aircraft are free. It's, uh, we'll get to that in a second. But for now, let's give, that's enough talking for me, let's give Flight a go. Uh, just to let you know, I've logged into my, uh, my X, my live account. Um, if you have a lot, if you have, if you play the Xbox and you play a lot of games and get a lot of your Gs, then it would be useful here if you want to buy aircraft. Anyways, let's get down to it. So, let's select play. And just to let you know, I tried this a little earlier, so we missed the, well, the, there were tutorials I heard a, a while ago and they're very simple, it's like a pilot, pilot wing style uh, missions. Uh, sorry for this, it's pretty much my first review but anyways, the show must go on. Um, before I get into it, the, I'm currently in free flight but let's check out the hangar first. As you can see, there's only two aircraft that you can choose in, well, without spending anything to start off with. The first one is the one that's kind of on the screen, the Boeing PT-17 Sturman Lux. Um, basically, you can adjust your fuel settings and it will tell you the range in the aircraft weight. So, we have some of the basics of aviation um, terminology, if you call it that way. Anyways, you can adjust the slider to how much fuel you want and it will reflect also in real life. The more fuel you put, the more weight that is put on and the longer takeoff uh, distance, a uh, takeoff roll that you need, well, longer length you need to take off at the runway. There's also other different paint schemes. If you want to unlock them, you have to play more of the missions in this game. And you have to work hard for it. So, just like in any other game, if you want the uh, upgrades, you have to play more. And there's more details on the aircraft. The other one, which Microsoft advertised heavily in the game, is the Icon A5. Now, before knowing what Microsoft, before knowing this aircraft, actually no, before I knew about this aircraft, Microsoft Flight was advertising this aircraft heavily and I got introduced to the Icon A5. I gave it a try and you can land on water and you can also land on land with it. And it's not such a bad aircraft. But anyways, let's select the icon first. So just click on it, and then you select aircraft. Oh, before I do that, if you want to purchase the other two aircraft, 
Um, as you can see, you have to spend a couple of G's to get it. Not only that, I kind of find it really stupid how like they don't include the preview of the aircraft straight away. You actually have to download it. I mean, I know that you're trying to cut space with this new idea, uh, this new type of you know purchasing or save, size saving, this this space saving, but I find it absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's only like a uh, 6 to 17 megabyte download, like to get the free preview of the P51 Mustang that it's just, you know, it's very tedious, it's kind of annoying. Nevertheless, let's select our aircraft, which is the iPhone 5. Now, as far as I know, I, the, only, the only place that you can fly is on the island of Hawaii. If you want to fly on the other islands of Hawaii, you'd have to purchase it. And it will cost you this much to purchase the 1600. The bad thing is that if you're not an Xbox, a heavy Xbox player or a heavy PC gamer, it's gonna be a hard time to get all those those G's that you need. You gotta work hard in the game. Anyway, is um Sorry, I'm just taking a look at what the other ones are. There's also multiplayer, which I want people to try. But anyways, let's get down straight to the flying. That's enough talking from me. So, I'm going to fly out from Hilo Airport. Get that back. Okay, so we're now into the game. And this is actually a surprise to me because when I tried this earlier, I didn't start on the runway. I have actually apparently started in the air. Anyways, as you can see, unlike just like the other previous flight simulators, we have a virtual cockpit. And if you want to center it again, just press backspace. Anyways, let's just start flying straight away. So I'm going to go full speed on my joystick, on my throttle. And as you can see here at the top, you have all the details uh, of the basic details of flying, like your speed, how much your throttle is, and your heading as well as like how much you have fuel left. I mean it's I mean it's good for the ones who are you know new to flying, like in the so-called sim world here, but at the same time I reckon that you would learn better if you actually just relied on the instruments just in front of me, just like that. Anyways, let's continue on. Um, buttons, uh, the buttons for the game are a bit similar to uh, to the original Flight Simulator series. So if I press G, the gear will be up. Um, S actually changes the view and there are quite a lot of interesting views. Now, I, I'm running the game at full settings and I have to say that I'm actually quite impressed because if I try to run on full settings in Flight Simulator X, um, all I get is lag. Oh, by the way, my computer runs on a Core i5 uh, quad-core processor with four gigs of RAM, and my graphics card is a, a GeForce a GTX 460. Um, so um, I'm quite impressed. Like I like the scene. I like the auto gen as well. It's everything is so detailed and. And also, I'm running fraps at the same time, and I'm getting a constant frame rate, so that's a good thing. Um, let's check the waves down there, see if we can get closer if there's any animations, because I know in the previous flight simulators they had animations. Um, wow, no animations. Well, that's a bit of a disappointment. Over here, the C, uh, again, the, the C graphics is excellent to say the least. I mean. I wish I could have some graphical settings like this in Flight Simulator 2004. Um, <laughs> it's just, uh, I have to say, it's really brilliant. Um, let's go outside for a bit, shall we? No, I have to. I have to think that the graphics, the graphics here are much better than the ones in, F, in Flight Simulator X. I mean, there's stability, there's no stuttering, no lag, and at a, and then 
in the horizon when you travel like the items load up pretty quickly and and I'm not and I'm not getting any frame rate issues so that's a that's the good thing about Microsoft Flight. I just wish they actually implemented this in FSX. If they did then I could have just you know moved to FSX from FS2004. But I'll save that for another one. Um, let's pause this for a second, shall we? Now, if I go to options and we take a look at the settings, um, yeah, everything is set to high and it's it's simple to set up. But the one thing I don't like about it is that there's no slider option like in the previous flight simulators where you can adjust your settings and it would be especially useful to those who have uh, a less powerful computer than I have and that's a bit of a disappointment with the gameplay it's once again much much simpler much more simplified than the previous simulators and there's not much freedom to how you actually want to um, fly around if you go to the audio uh, well, self-explanatory, it's not much of an option, so that's okay. Now, this is the one that concerned me the most. These are all the game controls in in Microsoft Live. Here's my joystick, and yeah, that's, that's not a lot. And if I go to the aircraft controls, that's not a lot as well. I mean, you can fly with the mouse, it's got the option you can, you know, invert. But... Look, just brakes, elevator flaps, lights, and the mixture of the propeller. So it's only pretty much the basics of flying. Now, if the if the future DLCs uh, it have more options to control your aircraft, then okay, that's fine. But at this point in time, I'm led to believe that even if there's going to be hundreds of regions released, and these are the only controls, then there's no point. Then it's only going to use only small aircraft is going to be used. You can't use Boeing 747s, Airbus A380s, not even a 737 or an A320 as well. It's just too simple. Uh, well, in a way, you can put this game to be like, you know, the basics of flying, like a training, a training thing. But it's so simplified that it's not worthy to be a good starter, a starter, a, a starter. For, well, let me let me rephrase that again. It's so simple that it's not even deemed worthy for a future flight simulator pilot to use to learn how to fly. I'm very disappointed in Microsoft in this approach. I mean, they said they actually took off the simulator, simulator name, but what's this? I mean, I can just plug in my Xbox 360 controller and fly like a maniac. Fly under bridges. I mean, you can do that in pilot wings. Well, I guess we'll just have to settle with with this for the time being. Anyways, let's go back for a bit. There's this other option I found that's called Aerocation. And basically, it's it's like your own mission. Welcome like to your the Aerocache hunt get, screen. Uh, Aerocaches can be difficult to find without doing a little research. Let's walk through the steps involved in starting an Aerocache hunt. I'll let her do the talking. The first step is to read the hint. Second, do an internet search using the hint to find more information. Or even better, find a location where the Aerocache might be. The third and final step is to start the hunt. This will place your aircraft above the airport closest to that Aerocache. Mm. I haven't tried this yet to be honest, but I actually kind of find this a bit interesting. It's like, at least, while there's free flight, at least there's like some some option for where the you know for for gamers not sim not hardcore gamers to do something with microsoft flight at least you know give them the idea of how to control the stick uh <laughs> let me say that again give them an idea of how to fly using their joysticks and you know like familiarize yourself flying around like in the game and i guess uh gives them a good idea to learn their VFR skills. I haven't tried this myself, but I hope I hope to f probably make a video on this one day. <laughs> Anyways, let's go back to free flight for a little bit. Now, 
the one uh, the one thing I like about this is that uh, well I purposely crashed because the funny thing is that when I um, when I crashed I got an achievement unlocked and I find that actually quite hilarious <laughs> you know five you get five G's just to just to crash a plane but the one thing I don't like about the crash physics is that the plane doesn't break up I mean it would be good if you have some visuals of the plane breaking up and crashing like just to give it some sense of realism but it's not what I expected really <sighs> I just wish that I could fly the P-51 Mustang so that I can, um, I can, you know, I actually love the plane, I love to fly that. Anyways, to, to cap it all off, um, flying is very basic in this game. I, it's nice for all the average gamers to actually give this, um, give Microsoft Flight a go, but for a hardcore simmer or for even ones who want to, like, enter the world of uh, flight simulation, Microsoft Flight isn't the game, is actually no, isn't the simulator, or even if it is a simulator for you, it's, it's not, it's not ideal for you guys at all. Uh, let's just go back to the main menu quickly for a second. Let's see if I miss anything. Um, I'll give multiplayer a go, um, but unfortunately I have no friends, so <laughs> forever alone. Um, it's also your own pilot profile so once again it shows all your stats like what type of aircraft that you fly the most what missions what what achievements you've done and shows you all the crashes so at least it gives you uh, a log of what you've done in the oh I didn't realize there was also a passenger option here and also Connor okay then I know I said earlier that maybe big aircraft may not be supported, but if future DLS DLCs uh, introduce more aircraft uh, aircraft control options, I mean, who knows? We could be flying 737s or you know, or cargo aircraft. But having said that, having said that, um, I just don't see, I just don't see this game being useful for big aircraft at all. And well, here's pretty much my achievements, like uh, Crash Tastic, that's when I crashed a plane, Pledging Careers when you start, and downloading a free previews when earlier I showed you that you download the preview of the aircraft that you want to purchase. And is there anything else? Uh, actually, I'll just do this quickly. Let's just fly with the. Oh, sorry, I should do that. Let's just uh, f let's fly with the with the other aircraft. Oh, I'm so horrible with my aircraft terminology. And even uh, and I play Flight Simulator 9 all the time. Anyways, let's decide to fly from. Uh, Here we are at Kona, and this is my cockpit of the PT. And I actually want to see if the, air, if the airport's a bit detailed. So let's go to an outside view. Okay, for all those who fly to Kona often in real life or in the fight sim life, um, please correct me with this, but I can't believe there's not a lot of buildings for the air, airport. Considering that they focus on Hawaii so much. Okay, let's go a bit closer. Uh, maybe I should have kept my mouth closed before I leave this If this is how Kona Air, this is how Kona Airport looks like in real life, just drop me a line. Um, I'm not sure if the airport is as detailed as. Oh, hang on. Let's pause that for a second. If I can now have a pause it. Alright, let's turn around. Without crashing. And 
hitting trees. Um, my point there, sorry, I was just being an idiot flying around, but, oh, I got an award for being a careless flyer. All right. If you actually saw from the gates, there was, there was also the push, the push, uh, the truck to push the aircraft back. So, there might be some support for bigger aircraft later on. Which is, a, which is quite a good thing. I hope I'm proven wrong with my statements. Um, let's fly again. Oh, I didn't know this. You can actually move your plane around to, to select your starting point. So, let's just start here at the highest point. So, let's fly. Okay, so oh, well, the default scenery isn't so bad. Um, it makes the land look very detailed. Okay, then. So um, once again, it's very basic flying this aircraft. Um, you can also select your weather options as well. So if I want. Um, so to do that, you have to actually get out of your flight first, and then select your flight conditions. So you can go from isolated thunderstorms to really stormy weather, and you can also fly it at night or at dusk. And like in flight simulator games, you can select your your seasons as well. You can also have the option to select real world time. So when I click this, um, whatever the time is in Hawaii at the moment, which I think is now night time as I record this, it'll show night time in the game as well. Well, it looks pretty nice. I actually like quite like the effects, especially since it's a classic. I actually do a very 